our next speaker, Jack Blasco, is uh, there seems to be sort of a theme running through tonight of uh, thinking critically, being skeptical, not looking for the easy answer. And um, Jack, in fact, says that he likes issues that are nuanced and ambiguous, so you never know if he is giving you the right answer or just making it up as he goes along. <laughs> He's an environmental uh, consultant, and he is going to talk to us about um, the space program. When your dreams come true, you still have to pay the bill. Our dreams to reach the stars have had a profound impact uh, on American society, and now with um, men in the moon, a space station, and an orbiting telescope that can bring distant galaxies as close as your neighbor's hot tub party, the dream has gone a long way towards coming true. But what, what price have we paid and has it been worth it? Let's look at this dream through a, the lens of a different telescope, the triple bottom line of sustainability that looks not only at the economic costs, but the social and environmental costs as well. America's rocket program took off after the Second World War and got a jump start in 1957 when the Russians looked sent Sputnik orbiting over American skies, leaving us with a nightmare of Nikita Khrushchev staring down like a not-so-friendly man in the moon. Well, we beat those commies to the moon, though, and in July 1969, our hearts swelled with pride as we watched Neil Armstrong take that one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The shuttle became our Greyhound bus to space, and with over 130 successful missions, they made it look easy. But the tragic losses of Columbia and Challenger reminded us that when you strip away the technology, the lives of very brave men and women still hang in the balance. Hubble, the world's best telescope with prescription eyeglasses, has fundamentally changed the way scientists look at the universe, like estimating its age at over 13 billion years, finally something older than I am. And you'll have to admit those pictures are really, really cool. The International Space Station was built by a consortium of four former enemies, including the US and Russia, um, and has served as home for astronauts from over 15 countries. The most expensive object ever built, it's the priciest hotel in or out of this world. The space program has also given rise to a myriad of spin-off products that you and I can use in our daily lives, like GPS navigation, WD-40, and those really fancy golf balls. <laughs> well, what does it cost? Let's first look at the money. NASA's 2011 budget is $19 billion. That's $5 billion for science, a $1 billion for research, $4 billion for exploration, and $5 billion for space operations. What could we buy with $19 billion? Well, we've all seen those ads for Save the Children and how for $28 a year, a $28 a month, $338 a year, you could sponsor a child. Well, with $19 billion, we could sponsor 56 million children around the world. Since 1985, Rotary International has spent $800 million in the largest privately funded public health campaign in history to eradicate polio and has reduced its occurrence to four countries. With $19 billion, we could finish that job. Our hearts all go out to the people of Haiti that was so recently devastated by that terrible earthquake. The Inter-American Development Bank estimates that we could rebuild Haiti for $15 billion. With $19 billion, we could do that and have change left over. Well, what happened to our environment here on Earth while we were out looking at the environments on other planets? They don't just send those rockets into space without a dry run. They're test fired first at sites like the Santa Susana Field Laboratory on test stands like these. Unfortunately, back in the bad old days, after every test, they'd flush the rocket engine with trichloroethylene, a toxic industrial solvent, which ran down the, the spillway, got into the cooling water pond, and seeped into the groundwater. Today at Santa Susana, there's over 500,000 gallons of TCE tied up in the bedrock ruining the on-site water supply and threatening the water supply of surrounding communities. Although NASA has been working aggressively to fix the problem, the on-site water supply will never be restored. In fact, most space program sites have environmental contamination, and although NASA is working to solve those problems, there are just some issues, like the presence of dense non-aqueous phase solvents in groundwater that are very expensive and difficult to fix. We carry a lot of morally ambiguous baggage, and the person of Dr. Warner Von Braun, founder of the American Space Program, former director of the Marshall Space Flight Center, and developer of the rockets that put men into orbit and on the moon. 
Before von Braun joined the good guys, he was a Nazi, a Waffen-SS officer, developer of the V-2 rocket that killed over 7,500 in attacks on European cities and took the lives of over 20,000 slave laborers who built the rockets in an underground concentration camp. After the war, von Braun didn't go to judgment at Nuremberg. He came to Alabama to build rockets for us, which leaves us with the question, is a war criminal not a war criminal when he has something you want? And is beating swords into plowshares the ultimate act of redemption? Well, I'll admit I'm conflicted. My heart swells with pride every time I see a shuttle launch, but it's broken by the pictures of those kids whose lives could be changed with so little money. So I'll leave you with a final question. If you had $19 billion and a blank slate, what would you write on it? <laughs>